Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the WordCamp Boston Open Source Panel. That was the break for the applause. <laughs> uh, so we'll do a quick round of introductions. I will start out. I am moderating today. I am Dwayne McDaniel. I come from Pantheon. I am Agency and Community Success Manager, meaning I spend a lot of my time with the open source communities of WordPress and Drupal, and work with agencies that are leveraging open source software to make the world a better place. And that is myself. Let's start on this side. Sure. So, my name is Jared Novak. I'm a partner at Upstatement, which is a creative agency here in town. And my connection to open source is I run Timber, which is a WordPress project to make templating and building themes a lot easier. Do the outsides of work our way in. Uh, I'm Mel Choice. I'm a product designer at Automatic. Uh, right now, my time is being donated uh, fully to work on Core. Uh, I'm also the uh, customization design, customization focus design lead uh, for 2017. And I'm Stephen Word. Um, I'm a core engineer at WP Engine. Um, much like Mel, they donate or sponsor my time toward towards WordPress core project. Um, I do some other engineering tasks as well, um, but that's the main purpose. Um, so involved with core, and then also um, plug in author, have uh, 98. Something like that. Uh, so that is what we do, but that's not 100% who we are. And I think that's an important distinction to make. Like we're also human beings who care deeply about not only this project but technology in general. But we're also just human beings. Like for instance, I really love karaoke a lot. Uh, it's kind of my go-to thing, and I'm passionate about that the same way I'm passionate about plugins working or infrastructure just scaling. Um, maybe a little more so in some cases, but just want to have my fellow panelists share a little bit of something. Like, what what do you do that's not this? Oh, that's that's not this. That's not this. That you're like a little passionate about something, something fun. Um. <laughs> um. Well, in other than open source, I'm focused on running and building a business, which is like, focused on running and building a business. But in terms of the open source connections. You know, the thing that really inspires me is the idea of being able to provide people tools that take things that they thought were not accessible to them or not possible and making them possible and hopefully easy. Uh, I meant more on the human side. Like, yeah. you own some four drones, don't you? I do. Okay, yeah. So, um, I do own four drones, um, two of which are currently in trees at Somerville Park. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like free drones, all it takes is a really, really big ladder and some kind of uh, a removal technique. Um, the drones, I, I, I got into like a year ago. These things, they cost like $20 on Amazon now. They have like full HD video. You can control them from the ground. They're so much fun. Um, but do keep them away from trees. That is highly, <laughs> highly advisable. That is great advice. Let's go down the end again. Uh, I play a lot of video games. <laughs> and I'm uh, learning how to play the drones right now. That's awesome. Yep. Um, I, um, I like making music, um, so um, it's like a hobby that I, I just like making stuff in general. I just like making things, which I kind of like on this whole thing anyway. Um, but like hardware synthesizers and like, um, not really like house music, but like electronic music. Um, I dabble with that and you know, it's another creative outlet I really enjoy. Excellent. Uh, and bet all of you have things. We don't have time for everyone in the room to go around and introduce yourselves. Uh, but I would like to be curious who, who is in the room here. So who here is a full-time developer? You can just go right here. Who here is a full-time designer? Anybody here not a developer or a designer? Awesome. Yell out. What, what do you do? One, Project two, three. Yell out. Product marketing. Harvard lawyer. <laughs> Harvard lawyer, we heard. Specialty uh, teacher, Lee Bay Power Seller. So we have a lot of people in the room. And I, Let's just get everyone on the same page first. Uh, with that, let's give a, what you think is a, a definition of free and open source software. I'm going to start with you, Mel. Software that comes with an open source license. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. And free as in freedom, not free as in fear. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll actually come back to that point. Uh, let's keep um, I suppose my take on it would just be. Um, it's available, and there's nothing behind, uh, like in the Wizard of Oz, like the guy behind the screen. So like everything is just very much at the forefront, um, and you're empowered to change what you want to write about. Uh, 
it's, it's software that you can read and actually see what it's made of as opposed to trying to decode binary or zeros and ones. You can actually see the functions, the variables, the classes that make, them, uh, make it up and make it work. And it's usually made in the public, so it's very community driven. Absolutely. And it, it, you mentioned something there. It's free as in uh, speech, I think. Not free as in beer. That's a very classic saying. Um, most of the time it is free as in just you don't have to pay for it to get your hands on it. But uh, the freedom of speech side, you can take it and do what you will with it. And that's not restrictive licensing as uh, you can only use the software in XYZ manner, otherwise we're going to sue you. That's uh, something very important around this. Um, and then the open source side, you can see the code. You can actually take a look at it. Uh, so that's actually one of the questions I had is what was the first time, what was the first piece of software, first time you saw the code or something? When you said, hey, this is open source, and you just went ahead and cracked it open and took a look at it. Uh, I think that would probably be WordPress. And the experience of sort of like, okay, this doesn't work, why? And going through the core code and chasing down you know, the bug or that particular case, probably the stupid thing I was doing, to understand, okay, why at this level does this thing function? That's the part of kind of being able to uh, you know, look behind the curtain and see what's actually going on and how it's handling the data um, that you're interacting with. So I don't know if this counts, but view source. Um, so when I was learning how to build websites uh, as a kid, I would just look at the source of other websites. And it's not necessarily open source in the same kind of way, but like browsers enabled me to just be able to like look at how a site was built. And I was able to use that information to uh, help myself learn how to build websites too. Um, let's see, I think it was actually Mambo, which is now known as Joomla. And um, obviously didn't like what I saw when I opened it up. <laughs> uh, for me, it was Firefox. I saw it was open source. Like, what, what does that mean? And I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, I don't understand any of this. Uh, I still don't. I still don't understand browsers. Um, but it introduced me to that entire concept that I could take this and modify it and do whatever I want with it. And I'm very glad I did. Uh, took, that, took that journey. So you mentioned earlier it has a community around. Is that you can mention that? I think that was Mel. No. Um, you want to talk a little bit about the importance of that? Like, why is it important that there's a community around open source? Yeah, I mean, so the more people we have working on it, um, the more, I guess, the more I see it, the more people find bugs, the more people are able to fix security issues, uh, the more that we come together to build something that uh, really is uh, good for everybody who uses it. Some, like a, one of the great things about WordPress is that I feel like it's, it's very easy to uh, get started with um, more quickly than say uh, writing your JavaScript app or uh, even even something like Drupal. Uh, WordPress is just pretty ubiquitous at this point. Uh, and so part of that is because of the community, the fact that we have so many people within this ecosystem making plugins, uh, making themes, just extending WordPress in interesting in interesting ways, uh, sharing those ways with other people, uh, just making really cool websites that inspire other people to use WordPress, hopefully, so. Excellent, so either of you have more thoughts on, well, how are we even defining the term community? Like, I'm not sure everyone here, again, I want to get everybody on the same page. What do we mean by open source community? What, is that, what does that encompass? Is it just developers? Is it just people committing core code and PHP? What do we mean by this? Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely includes uh, the users, and maybe not uh, the users of, like, Every user of Firefox, but actually, in some way, yes, because if you use open source software, you are supplying data on what works and what doesn't. You're submitting, you know, maybe it's as active as a crash report or a bug report, but users definitely factor into um, you know, how things get built by those developers, and even beyond just you know developers versus users, you know, figuring out how to document, figuring out how to uh, publicize and uh, uh, help users become familiar with open source software, that's all part of the community too. So I think it's kind of a full like, ecosystem of usage that makes that stuff really work. So by contrast, if we're talking about closed source CMSs, Sitecore, uh, Adobe CQ, those things, um, there is a user pool uh, that are helping each other out in the world, like, hey, this broke, what, what menu option should I look at? Uh, versus, hey, this doesn't work as expected, how do we go in and actually fix this. 
Um, so there's no real company behind an open source project. Now, there are larger contributors than others, and certain projects in the world definitely have uh, people. But the, can you speak? anybody speak to their experience of working with proprietary software versus open source software and the way that you've engaged with community there? Ooh, I'm not. I'm drawing a little bit of a blank there. I haven't done much in, uh, in the closed source world. I guess like the one that comes to mind probably the most would be just like Windows versus Linux, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, but I never really got involved. Um, if you don't mind me hijacking that question a little sure. bit, I wanted to kind of follow up on the last one just oh, please, please. Um, to the point of like you know what what do we mean by community and how does it work? Um, you know, it, it definitely is the the designers and the developers, um, but I, I think they would be doing a huge disservice not to. Uh, think about like the business entities uh, or, or the business owners. Um, I don't know. Like, I, if I was going to like make a template for it, like go to make.wordpress.org and look at the different boxes. Like, you know, core is only one of them. There's design and accessibility, and the people that um, you know are doing the videography and, and doing the translations. Uh, so they go on WordPress TV. The internationalization efforts. People doing accessibility efforts. Um, all of that counts. And. More of the what I really wanted to get at was uh, this whole thing wouldn't work without it. I don't I don't think WordPress would be successful if it had been closed source. Uh, 2003. I mean, we the community um, engages with each other, and you know, um, Rich, for example, like we've never worked together. But um, if I needed your product, like because I know you, um, I'm going to come find you, and then we have this relationship through the community, and the project as a whole gets bigger. Okay, follow up on that. I think actually going to take it back to the early 2000s, there actually was this like uh, real-time experiment in blogging platforms, um, and we're not at movable type camp right now. I'm not even sure it exists, but I remember when I was working in newspapers like in 2008, 2009, you know, they just bought like a $15,000 like movable type license, and oh God, like we, we need this to be fixed, but they, they won't fix it, and that whole sort of like, and I've experienced this as well with proprietary software. You find something that's wrong, you, you want to help, and they say, eh, thanks, but no thanks. You know, we're, we're not really interested in that. They don't have a model for that. And what's great about WordPress and so many open source systems is that um, breathability, that flexibility is all built in to be able to find improvements and, and transform it over time. Yeah, and I think with something closed source, especially like a closed source uh, web builder, uh, if you look at like Squarespace with Weebly, you really can only grow as big as they allow you to grow. You can't scale past that point because you can't add your own features. You're really limited to their specific feature set. In open source, you can, you know, if you have the ability, you could yeah, make it yourself. You could hire somebody to make it for you. And because it's all, you know, out in the open, because you can extend it, do whatever you want with it, you really can make it grow to what you need. Or change it completely. Or change it completely, yeah. I mean, look at, look at people who have built products on, on WordPress. Uh, so like Open Tables, I think it's pivoted, but you know, for a while it was WordPress driving it, but it didn't necessarily look like WordPress. There are just so much you can do with it. So I want to go back to something you had said there, um, back to make.wordpress.org. Uh, how hard is it to contribute to WordPress? Stab at it. Um, so um, the barrier of entry, that's 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 a challenging question, right? Um, I think that there is a little bit of a barrier to entry, but it's all the um, requisite knowledge is there, right? So um, I think that something that as a community, um, to be completely honest, that you know we, I, I, I'm glad that we're an open source community and that you know this is way better than it would be if it was something else, um, but it's still not perfect, and and, and it can be difficult. Um, I think that like some of maybe the um, like the low hanging fruit for getting involved quickly um, would be doing things like um, hanging out in the support forums would be a really great place because you can share knowledge and feel effective very quickly. Um, whereas to get like design buy in or something like you might have to play around with that a little longer or be in the community and be more respected or, or for a longer period of time. Um, but there's definitely opportunities to get in um, pretty much in any of those areas. Um, and like I said, you know, some of them are more challenging than others. Um, as far like, uh, like you know, I'm as a developer, that's my experience. Um, you know, like we use SVN as opposed to Git, which is like you know more popular these days, and things like that. Like you do have to do your homework, um, but there is um, not only documentation. Uh, there's a Slack channel, and then there's people in that Slack channel, and they're approachable. And so, um, you know, if you don't mind doing a little homework, it's it's very easy um, if it's approachable.
Absolutely. So I, I guess the underlying question I have there, I didn't mean to cut anybody off, you know, the thoughts there. Um, I think there's an impression, at least for brand new people that, you know, think about contributing. Do you have to be a developer, a PHP developer, to make a contribution to the project? I think you're, you know, the answer no here, but I just want to hear, you know, other people articulate. Yeah, I mean, I think Stephen hits on a good note there where WordPress core, there's not a whole lot of low hanging. There it is, you know, PHP developers want it. Um, or JavaScript. Or JavaScript, hey. Um, but the WordPress world is so much bigger, and I think, Stephen, you said you had something like 98 plugins somewhere out there in the world. Um, where I kind of got my start was, look, I just, I want to tinker and build stuff for me, or I want to find, you know, I, I think being an open source contributor, you know, creating documentation, creating articles about what you've used, you know, how you put different plugins or different tools together to make stuff work, that's a piece of open source. Like the, the user base and being able to popularize and, and share what you've learned is a huge part of it. Because otherwise it's just kind of code floating on by itself. So each core release of WordPress probably has between like 200 and 500 contributors depending on the, the release. But then there are, I would say, double that amount in the community doing other work that supports that. Whether it's translations, whether it's uh, documentation, support forums, uh, there's just so many ways to, to help out WordPress. And not even just like the WordPress software, but the WordPress community. Like if you run a meetup, uh, if you speak at a meetup, if you run a WordCamp, speak at a WordCamp, attend a WordCamp, you're a part of the community and you're contributing back to the community by being here. Uh, and volunteers as well. Like we couldn't possibly have WordCamps without awesome volunteers. Uh, so thank you very much for volunteers. Thank you so much. Uh, it, briefly, because I had a ton more questions, we're running out of time, and I want to give everyone a chance to ask a question out there. Uh, but can you just briefly, what was your first thing you contributed? I think, I think you mentioned. Um, yeah, the, the first thing I contributed was um, I've never, or I've made like two little contributions to WordPress core itself, but. The other stuff was I really wanted something that would let me add columns in the WordPress app. You know, a, a dumb, simple proposition, um, and I could not find a tool that really let me do it. So I built a little thing on GitHub, posted it, I started using it in a couple of client projects, and then I remember, uh, maybe it was like a month or two later, I saw a pull request. Like someone had downloaded my code, modified it, found an improvement pushed back to me and said, hey, I, I found something better. You know, the way you're doing this could be better. And that was like such a, a shot of adrenaline that someone saw value in what I did and thought like, wait a second, I can do this better. And I learned a ton from looking at their code and being like, wow, they, they really did do this a lot better. I, I, was, I had no business putting that out there. But of course, I, I think you have to be comfortable with the idea that what you're putting out there, especially if it is your first commit ever, is not going to be quote good, but also that that does not matter at all. Um, it's about kind of like building your training wheels, or that's not an analogy that makes sense, um, but building, <laughs> exercising, <laughs> practicing, and, and putting yourself out there, and I think you'll find that like the world is is supportive of that, especially in this community. Absolutely. Build your training wheels. That's the quote of the day. <laughs> what was your first? Uh... So. My first contribution ever uh, was 2011, I was planning on attending WordCamp New York City, uh, and they put out a call for designers to help with some branding work. Uh, and so I did a, like, a little bit of like vector illustration work uh, that made it onto some of the, like, the badges and the stickers, uh, and then I got to see all that when I was there at WordCamp. And that was the thing that really like was like, oh, hey, I did this thing, that's really cool, I wonder what else I can do. So that brings up, you don't have to contribute globally. WordPress and be accepted on to pull request, approach your local meetup, approach your local camp, that is still a contribution. Volunteer help set up chairs, your small way to start. Um, yeah, I would actually say that that was my first contribution, was here at Meetup Group in Boston, um, first time I got on stage and um, shared my experience and knowledge, right? And that's that's giving back, you know, I'm not, I'm not much of a blogger, I kind of hate doing documentation, um, but I don't mind just like streaming um, thoughts out of my head. So um, that was actually uh, probably one of the best things that I think that I've ever done uh, for my career as well was getting up there and doing that, by the way. Um, try it. Um, then like 
that from like a code perspective, one character change in core. I found the one low hanging fruit. I found this, <laughs> um, and I got it. And then like, but what was really weird though is just how proud I was of that because like um, one of like you know very mature stuff. But um, when you think that like what that character is on like twenty nine percent of the internet, and I put it there. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, I. I was a person uh, don't have a strong development background, and I thought there's no way I can contribute this thing until someone mentioned like you can you can read English and understand grammar, right? Like, yeah, like go work docs, and it changed my life. The, the first moment of like, wow, I can actually help people understand this stuff better without knowing anything about the underlying PHP. Uh, very happy. And there's uh, polyglots is always looking if you speak multiple languages. Please, you don't have to understand anything of what you're reading. You can just translate it to another language. It'll be awesome. Including British English. British English. We definitely need to talk about some British English. That's one, by the way. British English is, is English. <laughs> so British English is English, for those of you who don't know. Uh, yeah. American English is American. Uh, so definitely, we have about 15 minutes left, and I want to open up the floor. I do have a lot more questions. I could just keep asking questions all day here. Uh, but is there anyone in the audience that has a question for the panel about open source and contributing to the community? Yep, we have a man over there. Uh, we have a microphone coming around, so we can speak loud and clear, and everyone will hear you. Do you think the distinction between uh, free software versus open source is important here, or what does it mean to you? The distinction between free software and open source software? The, the distinction between free software and open source software. I think there is. Um, not to hijack the panel, but uh, who remembers shareware? Yeah, uh, all of us that had floppy disks um, <laughs> back in the day. And that was great and all, and I didn't have to pay for it, but I had no way of supporting that. I had no community around it. I had an email address that maybe someone would answer, and maybe someone else on the internet had a problem. And these are the early days of the internet when there weren't tons of support forms. Um, that's the first thing I think of is the big distinction, but there are many others. Um, I think premium plugins and themes are a good example of that. Um, they're for sale, but they don't lose the license at the point of sale. Um, so something that you could pay money for is still open source, and you still have the ability to iterate on it and do everything else that you do um, in an open source software project, um, even if you did exchange the initial you know, dollars uh, for the download or whatever initially. So I don't know if there's a philosophical distinction here between like free software as in software that is free and free software is software that is like, I don't know, freedom or what did you say? Freedom of speech. Freedom of speech, there we go, yeah. Um, but I use a lot of software that is free, but I certainly can't do anything to, to change it, to impact it, to improve it. Uh, there's no community necessarily around it. So, difference there I think. Yeah, I mean, same thing. Like, my mom has a lot of free iPhone games on her phone, but none of them are necessarily open source, and I see tons of ways to improve. <laughs> Apple, that's an interesting um, piece right there, because they do have a lot of free things. Uh, but they, if you read the license agreement, they're very, very restrictive on what you can and can't do with those things. Uh, versus WordPress is take it, go, run, be free. Um. Not directly to your question, but because the like the free thing has come up a couple times. Um, something that I think is is also probably uh, surprising is is that uh, the economy works even though it's all free and open, right? Like um, there's a lot of money in the WordPress world, right? Um, you know, business owners, plugin developers, theme designers, like. Um, and I one of the things that really um, stuck out with me is um, Pippin Williamson is a very respected uh, developer in our community. And uh, he gave a talk at US last year, um, basically where he laid out, um, he has a paid plugin uh, that you know you pay to download. Um, and he was asked like, you know, how many times has that been ripped off or somebody copied that and like tried to go do their own business? I think the answer was three. Like, I don't know why it doesn't happen, but it doesn't. And it's interesting. And I mean, I, I think it does happen sometimes, but though, if you're not willing to put in the work to make your own product, you're not gonna be able to put in the work to market your product, to find customers, to support your product. So if you if you can't even build your own thing, you're not really going to be able to support it in the way that somebody who really has put all this effort into it, has built a team around it. Sure. 
then is, is kind of to pile on Apple for a second. Um, what's one of the interesting things that I've been following there for the last few months is like with all of the kind of growth of machine learning, artificial intelligence, because Apple has such a secretive culture and secretive policies, they have found it incredibly difficult to make advancements and uh, recruit engineers because no one wants to work in a closable box of Apple. They want to work in a place where it's like, oh, I can learn from the best at Google and Microsoft and Facebook and, and share information. So they have had struggles. And have, I remember like a month ago, some announcement, they're like, all right, we're going to start a little like pilot program around opening stuff up and just see if that doesn't uh, you know, result in the end of the world or something. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it hasn't yet. Yeah, we're okay. We're okay for now. Um, other questions? All the way in the back. I'm, I missed like the first five minutes, so I'm not sure if you've already addressed this question that it was regarding the keynote speech about the future of open source itself being appropriated by, and I don't know if you've already addressed that, but um, you know, the large corporations you use, FA, GA, I assume I meant Facebook, et cetera, et cetera, and Google, um, and its future in general because of the, you know, monopolization of our new, brave new world. That was actually the topic I wanted to end on in my question. So thank you very much for bringing that up uh, in the last 10 minutes here. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and turn it over to you. I'm sure we all have very strong opinions on this. Yeah, I mean, just look at something like uh, Facebook Instant Articles and Google AMP. Um, kind of starting to be a maybe even like a, a website killer. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter now what like where the source is coming from as long as it's compatible or using those. Um, come back to me. Sure. I have unformed thoughts. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I, I have not, uh, so I, I missed the keynote this morning, but you know, I've, I have not encountered um, you know, on the internet some kind of like uh, uh, you know, Amazon, Facebook, like <laughs> it slams shut and all of a sudden you, know, you can't do anything with it. I think there is uh, a cycle between these things. Like thinking of like you know, Facebook instant articles, I remember reading a year ago, oh my god, it's going to kill everything. And then you know, the last few months talking to the publishers we work with, they're like, oh yeah, it's kind of stalled and dead. Like we're not really pursuing it anymore. So these things, you know, that's kind of an example of like a short term cycle. Um, but what I what I have seen is like that there's kind of this ebb and flow between like, oh, it's all wall garden and it's totally closed off from us, and then wild west. And I think we might be at you know maybe an ebb of that where it looks like the internet is going to die. Um, but I I have great faith in. Um, overall, you know, the internet and, and you know, the internet being the economy is a weird partnership between um, the big corporations who are doing quite well for themselves and us, who you know, honestly, there is a trickle down between how we are all able to support ourselves and, and have a business and make money and, and do stuff like this and being able to be supported by um, companies that are much better at printing money than us. Um, so I just want to make sure that I understood the, the, the question uh, correctly. Um, so this is about like basically like big internet destroying open source. Is that like kind of what we're asking? Yeah. Yeah. Not even. Okay. Um, so I think that um, so we've seen a couple of times like uh, I'm just trying to like like think of an example, but um, like Microsoft I believe tried to uh, do WordPress hosting like on their Azure platform. Um, and it didn't go very well. And that's not because there's not smart people over at Microsoft, right? Um, I think that they have a 30-year-old history of doing things in a certain way with a certain culture. Um, and I think it's going to be very difficult to fast follow that. Um, you know, uh, I, I can also see concern. Um, like, so for example, uh, Mel and I are both sponsored by um, businesses, right, to give back. So you could theoretically see how maybe you could buy influence if you had big enough pockets. Um, but it just, it, it's, it's not something that I'm really afraid of, uh, because it's a meritocracy, right? Like, there's no amount of money that you can lay down to get a feature adopted. Um, and if you did, like, you know, the, the rest of the, let's call them the, the free world, um, is going to push back, and you're just not going to do that. I don't think that, I don't think that corporate America can bulldoze um, the open source projects. I really don't. Um, you know, they can maybe augment them in a way that would be beneficial, but I don't ever see them getting like full control. 
Yeah, I agree. And I, I especially see people uh, who do come in from companies who have uh, very, like, very helpful contributions. And, like, they see, like, working with my clients, working with this, you know, I see that, like, this is a real big detriment in work for us and I want to work to improve it. So in a lot of ways, having people come in from different backgrounds, being sponsored by different companies, also brings in uh, a different level of um, like diversity of product that you wouldn't otherwise see uh, with people who are totally independent. So there's uh, the fact that a lot of major open source advances have actually come from these companies pushing things into the wild. The two examples I think off the top of my head are um, HHVM, the hip-hop VM, uh, pushing PHP to get their act together and get PHP 7 out the door, and Cassandra, uh, which really jumped the uh, NoSQL movement. Uh, some people say they released it to slow everyone else down, because if you ever looked at Cassandra, that's completely confusing. But um, these are major things that were released by private companies back into open source, or into open source, and really drove the rest of the market and caused waves. Um, I guess my question inside of that, for you, the rest of my panel members here, is uh, what, what do you see as, uh, do you see these larger companies as more of a threat or more of needing us more than we need them? Within WordPress, I don't specifically see anyone as a threat, but for the things like Amazon, Google, I mean, a lot of them rely on or even produce open source software. I mean, look at Facebook. Facebook made React, and now we're implementing, like, we're adding React to two different parts of WordPress. Um, so there is, there definitely is, like, a cycle there uh, where they benefit from our work uh, and we benefit from their work. I mean, especially, like, look at something like Facebook, uh, something like Microsoft. They host all their blogs on, on WordPress for the most part. So there, there definitely is kind of a cycle of reciprocity there. Um, so with your like, uh, you know, your HHVM PHP uh, example, um, you know, what was interesting about that is like, yeah, that was Facebook, like, you know, pushing an open source product or uh, project. Um, what actually ended up happening was is the open source community wanted PHP, right? Like that's that that was just what they wanted. Um, so they took all the good parts from HHVM and 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 did what they wanted with it. Um, I don't consider it necessarily a huge threat because there's always the alternative. Like, if you don't like what company A is doing, fork it and do it better, right? Uh, excellent. So I, uh, we only have a couple minutes left. Um, and I did want to end on uh, a related, uh, where do you see um, the project going from here? Uh, based on what you've seen, like the growing momentum within the community in the last couple of years. So I see two big things coming. Uh, first of which being the WordPress REST API, uh, which is now in core, uh, has been used by a bunch of uh, really cool new sites, uh, really pushed by actually a company, Human Made, uh, and Ryan McHugh, uh, somebody who works at Human Made, was also a WordPress contributor. Uh, and also Gutenberg, uh, which is the new editor in WordPress. It's really the start of, I would say, um, a better editing and eventually like building and customization experience in WordPress. And there's so many <laughs> inadequacies in WordPress there where like we really, I mean, we're not as good to build a website with necessarily as a, as a closed platform. Like if you're just like a person trying to build their own website, like you should probably at this point go to Squarespace. But we don't want that. We want people to be on WordPress. And so we need to actually like do the work to catch up to that. And so that's kind of our biggest area of growth where like if we don't address these issues, like we might not survive the next 10, 15 years. Yeah, I definitely see it you know, thinking of those components. It's moving from this place where a few years ago it's like, okay, there is WordPress and this is the WordPress way to do front end things. This is the WordPress way to structure your site. This is the WordPress way to build content types and custom fields, etc. And more and more, I think the pressure is actually, it's, it's a weird like opening of open source, where I imagine five years from now, the WordPress you use might be very different than the WordPress someone else uses because of the way that you've put together, you know, which front-end framework are you using, how do you use the API. Even on the back-end, like, we are doing more and more things where it's like WordPress almost as like a headless CMS, just a content store, and then other stuff 
or sorry, other parts of the system are doing all of the heavy lifting when it comes to how both front end users interact as well as even editors and administrators. So I think that overall, like we, we might be kind of getting into like meta open source not too long from now within WordPress. Or even as a meta team already. Um, so uh, two things that I kind of predict or see coming. Um, uh, I think Mel really nailed it on the head. Um, so just to like kind of reiterate that, um, I think WordPress is going to stop looking like WordPress uh, less and less. Right? Um, we talked about happy tables, um, you know, or there's a, there's another cool project actually by Human Made to um, you know REST API heavy influence uh, called Nomad Base, and uh, it, it's actually evolved into something different. But the front end for that site was actually a Google Map for a while, um, and now I think it's a chat client. So like it's it's like you asked me. When I landed on that website, what was this made in? Like, I wouldn't have even guessed WordPress. Um, and then the second thing that I think that we're going to see um, that kind of ties back into the money thing is is that um, you know the those big companies that we've been talking about so much in here uh, are paying attention now, right? Like, um, I if I, I beat myself up because I've been in this uh, in this community for like so long, and like I wish I had seized some of those opportunities back when they were easy. Like, like you know, I mean, like SEO is done now. Like, I can't go make a million dollars off SEO, but I mean, that was like a thing. And, um, but anyway, so um, they're going to adopt us more, yes. I think. Uh, well, we have to wrap it up. If you're interested in contributing, there is a contributor track tomorrow. So come back in the morning, and that start, or in the afternoon, that starts at 1220. No, they're opening this up. Uh, so thank you very much. And the conversation doesn't stop here. Please feel free to approach us. Talk to your peers. You're all in the community. Thank you very much. <laughs>